In today's episode, I will tell you the history of Poland, which has no kings, and that's why, because it is a Cossack Republic. Yes, it will be a very strange story, but thanks to this, the Polish Hussars are the most powerful cavalry in the world. And it consists only of heavy Hussar regiments and lightly armed Cossack cavalry. Armor power so good, you don't even have to pay a lot for it, and it will destroy every opponent anyway. Hello guys, Lucas here. In Poland in the 15th century, there is an interregnum, because, you know, a Warnensik died on Varna, so that in Poland, the nobility can do whatever they want. This led to the deterioration of relations with all neighbors. Poland entered into a trade conflict with the Danes. Hungary was found guilty of losing at Varna, and Bohemia were better off not existing. They even wanted to remove Bohemia from the maps. Apparently, it was about some famous mole. He was suspected of stealing coal. The nobility, taking advantage of the situation, established a lot of privileges for themselves. And during the National Assembly, the nobles decided that Poland must consolidate, that it needs to renew its human reserves after the last war with the Turk. Meanwhile, in the Polish Sejm, it was decided to return some land to the crown. Although it would still be possible to reform the country, but who needs it? There is only one delegate in the Sejm, and I still have to bribe him, I mean convince him. Unfortunately, there are no advisors who would like to work for half the wage. The search for potential candidates for the throne has also begun. That is why the royal marriage with the Habsburgs was concluded. Ways were also sought to improve relations with the papacy. Uh, unfortunately, the Austrian Archduke dies very quickly, and Poles decide to take advantage of this situation. Bye-bye, Austria, successor to Ladislaw III, and so, at this moment, the fate of Poland hangs in the balance. But that one Jagiellonian has already shown a sharp mind, and he charged the best Turkish army, and then he died. The Polish nobility at least once stood up to the challenge and came to an agreement. They decided that one of them, Zygmunt West Casimir, would be the new ruler of Poland. In the meantime, a civil war broke out in Moldova, and the Polish ruler decided to intervene in it. He supported one of the claimants, Roman, and he sent an army to help him. After the war was won, Moldavia became a vassal of Poland. King Casimir also issued a special privilege strengthening the Duke's power to make the rulers of Mazovia and Moldavia more loyal. Dynastic matters, which were a consequence of the defeat at Varna, were also resolved. As a result, this led to a tightening of relations with the Holy Roman Empire of the German nation, to which Poland soon joined, and the raison d'etat for Poland was to expand its borders further to the east. And beware if you want to repeat the exact steps I do. Do not click this mission. Fortunately for us, the Grand Duchy of Lithuania entered into an alliance with the Republic of Novgorod. It was heralded by the imminent conflict between Lithuania and Moscow, because Moscow will surely attack. Right, Moscow? Are you attacking already? Alternative Alternatively, King Casimir considered an invasion as soon as he upgrades the army. Efforts were also made to convert the people of Red Ruthenia and Podolia to Catholicism, because now, in most territories, is the Orthodox faith. In 48, Moscow attacked the Principality of Tver, which caused the Republic to be drawn into the war. And Novgorod will not answer the Lithuanians' challenge to arms. Oh, we have an offspring! When was he born? Polish troops defeat Lithuanian troops near Podolia, a very big win, as well as after a short chase, a smaller army of the Lithuanian allies. Then the Polish army is headed straight for Vilnius, and Vilnius itself will be besieged by mercenary and vassal armies, the second slaughter near Podolia. The first war with Lithuania ended with obtaining large reparations from Lithuania, but also the liberation of the population from the Zaporozhye territories, which is then attached to the Polish crown. Although we are a duchy now, can a duchy talk about a crown? And in the final tournament, a champion emerged, and that thrill, do we get a good general or not? Yes, I definitely got a legendary commander. A new state appeared in Poland, Cossack, and the king gave it new privileges. Cossacks are great horsemen, and the Polish cavalry will certainly benefit from them. Newly conquered territories were added to the empire. We're not coring it a second time. Our ruler respected the Cossacks so much that he decided to preserve their high autonomy. He released a vassal, Zaporoz. Unfortunately, the Hungarian and Austrian thrones merged. Therefore, the attention of the Polish prince was turned to Silesia, the more so that the Bohemian army is involved in another conflict. Therefore, our young prince will take advantage of this situation. Polish troops enter Silesia with the help of Austrian troops. Our goal will be to conquer all of Silesia. We are also starting the process of annexing Mazovia. Krakow is experiencing a big boom in the meantime, and it's growing fast. Therefore, investments in infrastructure are needed. And after a rapid war, Silesia was added to Poland. 
The Bohemia also lost the Second War, and Bohemia was forced to release Moravia and Lusatia. Silesia is a very rich area. That is why the Polish administration is brought here. As a result of the rapid development of Krakow, the Renaissance trend appeared in it. After the lands of Mazovia were annexed, the new capital of Poland was moved to Warsaw and then to Chelm. Let it be my secret for now. The Prussian Confederation was founded against the unjust rule of the Teutonic Knights. Poland will support the Confederation, and it will support it militarily, and all this in order to weaken the Teutonic influence. The rebellion was probably bigger than the Teutonic Knights had expected. Let's hold off on developing diplomatic technology for now. We need points. A defensive alliance was taken with France in case of any wars with the Ottoman Empire. But this is so ugly. And so the Republic of Danzig was born, but unfortunately the Teutonic Order did not fall. Never mind. Super important. You do not make Danzig your vassal yet. In gratitude for the help of Zaporozhye in previous wars, Prince Casimir gave them two provinces. With the development of state administration technology, it has become possible to choose the direction that Poland will follow. In this case, it's better to manage your own vassals. And to start the very slow process of annexing Zaporizhia to Poland, there was a Polish-Lithuanian war in order to humiliate and weaken it in the international arena. The war itself ended in a quick victory, and Poland itself stood on the threshold of its golden era. Almost. And the grateful Polish ruler repays the debt of Zaporozhye, and he gives it more provinces. Now he transfers Lviv to him. Hello. Oh, provinces, not claims. In order to improve Poland's diplomatic reputation, the papal legate was obtained. The Polish golden era has also come. Do not worry. We will have it again in the future. Thanks to it, new ideas in Poland develop much faster. Austria calls on Poland to help in the war. For this reason, the ruler handed over several more provinces of Zaporizhia. To get his help in this war, of course, oh, Warsaw goes to Zaporizhia, territories all the way to Poznan. Poland has significantly increased its diplomatic reputation in the international arena. Therefore, the court will focus on diplomacy. The Duchy of Poland has no interest in the war with Venice, which is why we ended this war. The alliance with Austria was also dissolved. Meanwhile, Poland is getting smaller, smaller, and it's shrinking a lot. Therefore, King Casimir decided to gain new territories from the Bohemia. Meanwhile, the provinces belonging to Zaporozhye are also being developed. I do it to slow down the integration process of Zaporozhye. I'm too fast. Bohemia, give Poland three provinces up to the gold mine. We don't take extra money and war reparations. King Casimir is planning another war with Bohemia as there's a brotherly Slovak nation in Hungary. The Polish ruler decides to invade and war with Hungary and Austria. The fact that Poland will acquire another gold mine, by the way, has nothing to do with it. As France had full obligations towards Poland, it is drawn into this war. Although the Polish army has no problems so far, and the war ends very quickly, all of Slovakia is added to Poland. Almost all Slavs liberated. And after that war, Poland shrunk again. No! And it shrunk again. All right, and our ruler gives more provinces of Zaporozhye. As you can see, if Siporozhye has 90% annexation progress, I give them another province. If they get close to that again, I'll give them another province. Watch out for the liberty desire of your vassals. It's time for a preventive war with Lithuania to secure our borders for the next 15 years. The same thing will have to be done with Moscow. The Lithuanian allies are routed, and the Lithuanian army is fighting a guerrilla war and avoiding clashes. The Lithuanians seem to have gained a new commander, but it didn't help them. They were defeated in the Battle of Cherniguas. The weakness of Lithuanians was used by Muscovite. Therefore, Polish troops must intervene in Moscow. Even France will help us. The Duchy of Poland easily defeats Muscovy. Even though the Duchy of Poland itself is now really small, this campaign is getting weirder. The war with the Muscovites ended with a nine-year period of peace, and Zaporozhye gets all of Slovakia. The Duchy of Poland currently has only four provinces. However, Zaporizhia is grateful to Poland, and there are no independence aspirations. It's been seven years, so it's time for another war with the Bohemia, to lose it shamefully this time and give the three provinces that we have left to Bohemia. Thanks to this, Poland remains only in Helm. But are you sure? Because now my ruler grants a certain privilege to the nobility, which means that suddenly we have 100% of Zaporozhye. Voila! There was Zaporozhye and there is none! Tada! And now you may wonder, what is this story about? Don't worry, we'll explain everything soon.
Our ruler began to strengthen power in Poland by creating new states. In all provinces, he also reduced the autonomy of the local population. He broke his alliance with France. He also wanted to develop the Polish provinces everywhere. So he issued special edicts and then invested a lot. He made the Republic of Gdansk a Polish vassal. Most importantly, he did not want additional land from the Confederacy. What he wanted most was a five-year period of peace. Unfortunately, changing the status of Maudui from March to vassal did not have the same effect. Time to send the legendary general into his well-deserved retirement? I can't believe I'm doing this. Now in his old age, our ruler has suffered from some kind of dementia. He dropped the crown, he got on the horse, and drove off into the setting sun. He liberated Zaporizhia, which had 40 provinces. Remember to indicate that you want to play this Zaporozhye. Zaporozhye is of the Catholic faith because there were more such provinces here. But nothing prevents you from converting to orthodoxy in the future. Thus began the era of Zaporozhye, which unfortunately is still a vassal of this tiny Poland, with the very young ruler Prince Ivan. Zaporozhye inherited a developed administration, which caused them to already know the whole defensive idea. However, this was not how the road of this Zaporizhia was supposed to go. It hurt you, didn't it? Zaporozhye ideas are focused on plundering and developing their own provinces. Zaporozhye itself is on the way to strengthening the aristocracy. Then Ivan answered the call of the steppes. The political system of Zaporozhye changes to a republic. We become a Cossack council, which will strengthen our traditions of mighty cavalry. And beware, this is a unique republic that can plunder a province. The further path of reform of this republic is rather standard, with some exceptions, but not in this episode. Ivan reforms the country towards political dynasties and more frequent elections. Rather, he is certain that he will be a frequently elected ruler, and that will rather strengthen his position. Our prince knew that he now had five years to take over the country. That is why he created new provinces. He again reduced the autonomy of the local population. As a result, it was low practically throughout the country. He then focused on establishing new trade routes, and he himself was known for being a patron of the art. Cool. To make the country more stable, the conversion of the province to Catholicism began. Diplomats were also sent to Poland's enemy. For example, to Moscow or the Ottoman Empire. Zaporizhia had a lot of crown land. It wasn't really worth selling. Alternatively, Ivan could use this to reform the country more quickly. However, he certainly wanted to strengthen the Cossack state. After all, he strengthens the cavalry. Therefore, he gave them a number of further privileges, which greatly strengthens the Zaporozhye cavalry. And the loyal Cossacks are the majority of the Cossacks in the army and these were very strong regiments famous for strong cavalry strikes and it doesn't matter if it's flat terrain mountains or forests. i don't believe it poland has recruited more troops our newly liberated country doesn't make much money but we'll change that quickly the more so that a new golden age may soon begin and the splendor of zaporozhye allows it to be perceived as less of a threat we will be able to fight for the freedom of zaporozhye in the 10th year that is in less than four years we definitely want to use this period to develop our country the more that fought helps us in this in Zaporozhye, Polish culture is definitely acceptable, and even after a while it becomes the new dominant culture. Could it be a dream about the creation of a new, powerful Poland? We just need to get rid of the usurper. Ivan wins the first election, dawn of a new republic, and it already has to deal with such rebels from Krakow. So do we still have claims to practically all of my country? All in all, it's not surprising some of these rebels are approaching. Let's change our country's attitude to a military one. October 1490. This is the moment when the period of peace with Poland came to an end and Zaporozhye can fight for its freedom, although it will not be favored by other countries. But who would care? Our troops are going very quickly to the capital of Poland. Danzig and Moldova should rather not take part in this war, although Moldova became very loyal. Lithuanians supported Poland? I will remember it. But where are you getting the money from? Unfortunately, Ivan's army had to attack Danzig, and the same later to Moldova, because the Polish army fled there. But fortunately, after a few years, we win freedom we conquer the last Polish province. As a result, Gdansk and Moldavia become vassals of Zaporozhye. Fortunately, with the new vassals, we have a long period of peace, so we have time to lower their liberty desire, I guess. And a truly Cossack Poland could be created, but this is not the moment yet, because it will be fun to use Zaporozhye and aristocratic ideas to develop a gold mine. Bypassing all international regulations, Moscow supported the independence of Danzig. Gold is developed? Well, this is the moment when it's time to create the Republic. I mean, Poland, of course. Yes, we all know that Polish traditions are the best, because we're gonna make an epic heavy cavalry, cheaper cavalry. Cool, isn't it? Warsaw becomes the capital of Poland again. 
Ivan sends claims against the Prussian Confederation. As a result, the entire Danzig region becomes the national territory of Poland, so our diplomats won't have to work so hard to get him annexed to the crown. Only war with Moscow awaits us, because then it will stop the supporting Danzig. By the way, when creating Poland, we left the Holy Roman Empire. Eh, never mind, the Polish Renaissance will reign in Poland. At court, we can employ Nicholas Copernicus, who will work almost for free because, you know, he's passionate about it. Iwan also started building up the Polish army. And it comes at the right time because another intervention in Moscow has to be made. To save Lithuania from this aggressor, the Cossack army was called up quickly, almost ready. We are going to war. Not enough cavalry for now. When I click this button, it only gets infantry units. It's a pity because I can already have a lot of cavalry. Our peacekeeping armies secure Lithuania and the Moscow troops immediately retreated. They were here a moment ago, but they're gone now. Polish nobility and its problems. Piotrkov statute? Let them be this time. Moscow almost immediately ceases to support the freedom of Gdansk. More cavalry for our army, and our armies stand under the fortresses of Moscow. Now you just need to get them. Poland sends territorial claims to Lithuania. We don't like that she is becoming such an easy prey for Moscow. In addition, the roots of our country go back to the culture of Ruthenia, and we want to secure it for us. Despite the ongoing war, we continue to reform our country. Of course we go to the the Cossack regiments. A good alternative would be to invest in cavalry. However, our country is proud of its Cossack roots and we reach for them. Unless you have a different opinion, then tell me. The Polish armies had to retreat to Ostrodar and break up the Muscovite army here. News has reached us from the western border. Austria and Osman are at war. We also receive information that this time the Scots will not only win freedom, it's time to smash the Danish army. They shouldn't stand a chance against us. Rather, thanks. Unfortunately, rebellions broke out in our area. They took advantage of the fact that Polish troops were in Moscow. And there, of course, we had great victories. As a result, we humiliated the Muscovites and took significant war reparations. And most importantly, Lithuania was saved. We secure Rus. Meanwhile, Lithuanian troops for some reason left their own country and fled to the Ottoman Empire. Nevertheless, we crushed the Lithuanians. This may be due to their military backwardness. Besides, Moscow is similarly backward. We take over their capital from Moravia. By the way, we're plundering as a republic. God, this is so cool. This is probably my favorite nation to play at the moment. Maybe this is the time we should dissolve the Holy Roman Empire. Let's see. Let's finish the destruction of Lithuanian armies. We conclude the white peace with the Livonian order. It's to invade them in a few years. Refugees from Byzantium arrive in Poland. We will gladly accept them, and the whole area of Rus was secured. By the way, we gained a direct border with the Ottoman Empire. We don't want to plunder these provinces. Because we accept Ruthenian culture, Poland and Sweden form a defensive alliance. Prince Ivan is also working on an alliance with France. After all, we are a new, better Poland. Information about a new branch of Christianity called Protestantism reaches Poland. Poland and France become allies once again, and the doctrines preached by Protestantism fell to Ivan, so much that he introduced it throughout Poland. And now we convert starting with the provinces that give us the most religious unity. Are there any new privileges for us? I don't think so. Oh, it is. This is a good time to regain the Polish national lands that the Bohemians took from us. Well, at this point too, and we will recover the gold mine. Austria will not defend Bohemia. It fights other very hard wars. Oh, time for military reform. Reclaimed lands, plus we secured Praga. We only loot this one. In the newly conquered territories, it is necessary to introduce our hard rule. We are starting to annex Danzig and Moldova to our territory as workshops have already been built everywhere in Poland. Time to fix the trade, because this one unfortunately collapsed in the meantime. This process began with the expansion of the largest trade centers and expansion of local markets. Previously, there was no point in doing this, because remember that each tag change lowered their level by one. The Lithuanian army has no chance against us. Yes, there was a war for Livonia with the Livonian order, by the way, it will shorten the period of peace with Lithuania. The matter of the order has been completely resolved. The brig came to us by chance. As the first aspect of faith, an increase in efforts to evangelize the infidels was chosen. Alternatively, maybe the development of the province because we would have cheaper construction of buildings for 10 years. I chose Protestantism because it will work great in Poland, especially since it will be building our hussars. Many other aspects of faith will also work great in Poland.
Despite the religious turmoil, another Polish golden era began. The idea of parliamentarism was also restored. But let someone else deal with these stupid laws. And the first thing we're going to process, it strengthens our Republican traditions. Polish armies again crossed the Lithuanian borders in order to protect them from the Muscovites. They're very aggressive. Less and less Lithuania. There was an Ottoman Muscovite war. All right, let's invade Moscow. Because it will be quite beneficial to gain the rest of Livonia for Poland. Our ruler is very clever. He waited until the entire Muscovite army had literally gone to Denmark and called Sweden to war. Now the Swedish forts cut off the entire Muscovite army in Denmark. There is no unit here. So what? The partition of Russia? The further path of ideas that Poland will follow is, of course, horde ideas. Because it will go back to the most wonderful Cossack roots. Better cavalry, cheaper cavalry, less aggressive expansion, and a more stable country. Thanks to this, cavalry regiments are currently cheaper in Poland than infantry. Cool, right? As Danzig has already become an integral part of Poland, now we have to establish new provinces here. Stabilize the situation. This is a very important region for Poland. Austria and Hungary have already become one country. Danzig is such an important region for Poland that the center of trade was moved here. And as Poland has already become a really big country, we need to start investing in courts that will strengthen our power locally. The period of prosperity for Poland is just beginning. The Polish crown, which increases our production throughout the country. This allows us to earn even more. And now Poland should follow the path of further internal development of the economy. It is time to intensify efforts to develop the Polish countryside because it will cause that the Polish countryside will develop really well over the next 25 years. More precisely, it's about this Polish village in this blue area. As a result, each manufacturer brings measurable profit. And unfortunately, after 50 years, Ivan dies. It will be hard to replace him. The Polish army is undergoing a complete reorganization, invested in Cossack cavalry and artillery regiments. We will not witness the infantry. There was also a separate army of Polish heavy hussars. It is a good thing that peace with Moscow has just come to an end. And this one, fortunately, attacked Lithuania again. We have to defend it, but this time to finally get rid of this Moscow menace. We'll get some territory from it. Polish peace army liberates the Lithuanians. In the meantime, I finished developing the horde idea. And now our cavalry is really powerful. And this is not over yet. And here is a question for you, dear viewers. Do you want to know the continuation of this story? Because to create a truly powerful cavalry, I would have to play this campaign until 1600. Carry out such a mission and develop two more ideas. Leave a thumbs up or let me know in the comments. A Lithuanian reserve was created. Despite raising capital from Moscow, we still have a lot of manufactories to build in Poland. What's another very rich country around here? Let's think. Time to liberate the Crimean Cossacks, just like the rest of Zaporizhia needs to be recaptured. The war with the Ottoman Empire is proceeding very strangely. They emigrated to France, and there, without much problem, the French are smashing the Turkish armies, because even spies were sent everywhere in search of Turkish armies, but they're nowhere to be found, even though the empire somewhere has an army of over 100,000. But where is the army? Why am I taking these fortresses so quickly anyway? What is going on here? Hurdu Hussars? No. But no, the Turkish army was spotted very close to the Crimea. And so the first army under the command of Zygmunt August strikes the Ottoman army, destroying them completely, incurring almost no losses. At Teodoro, the Polish army fights with the Ottoman army several times larger and wins too. But in the pages of history, the French were probably the leaders in this war. Poland gains a significant part of Crimea, and thanks to the victory in this war, Poland becomes an empire on the international arena. But is this the end of the story? I don't know. Let me know in the comment, and I invite you to a fictional story in which I play an alternative history of England and the creation of the Angevin Kingdom.